take two. All right, so just lift by the wheel well itself. That should be. Welcome back to Steve's Project Car Garage. My name is Steve. What you just saw there was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. My father-in-law and I got the opportunity to go ahead and take the bonnet off the Spitfire. Next step is to go ahead and build a rotisserie and get this body off the frame. Stick around, it's gonna be a good video. All right, welcome back. So uh, for those of you who are observant, you'll notice that uh, this is a different day. Um, so a couple of days have passed since I went ahead and pulled the bonnet off, which I now have strapped up over there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of show you what it is exactly that I've got for uh, wood and hardware. And then I'll kind of give you an idea of what my plan is. Here's what we have. <laughs> so we have a bunch of four by fours, okay? So we have a, a 10 foot four by four, we have an eight foot four by four, and we have two six foot four by fours. We have a four foot four by four that I've had kicking around. Um, I went out and I bought two two by fours, uh, one of which I already cut. Um, and uh, actually, so no, three two by fours, one of which I already had, one of, two of which I've cut. Um, so that's what we have for wood. This is about $70 worth of wood. So not too bad. Now let's come over here. This is the hardware department. This is the other $70 that I had to spend on this. So about 150 in total. So I got some four inch uh, swivel casters from Harbor Freight. These things are about four bucks each. And they're PVC, so I'm not expecting them to last forever, but they should work perfectly for just moving around stuff in the garage. That's it. They're not gonna go on road boxes. They're not gonna have 10,000 miles put on them. So. That was about uh, was it, four bucks a piece times six. So I don't know, you do the math, uh, 24 bucks. Uh, I got the hardware to go ahead and screw these in. Um, I have some pipes. These are uh, 10 inch nipples. They are three quarter inch. And then I have um, some floor plates for the 10 inch nipples. Uh, and then I have some eight inch, uh, I wanna say these are half inch or three quarter inch. Um, actually, no, they are three, three, six, I don't remember, I don't remember. Anyways, got those bolts. These are gonna be for what bolts to the back. Got some more screws for bolting these guys in. I uh, got some lag screws here. These lag screws are gonna be for holding the uh, the frame together in a couple of places. And over here I got some more screws and some lag bolts. So that's kind of what we're looking at for the hardware. It's really kind of a straightforward build. So um, I think what I'm gonna do first is cut some wood so I can kind of show you what I'm gonna do in terms of putting this together. Uh, and then I got the crane over there. And if I feel tenacious, maybe I'll lift this guy off tonight. I don't know. I got these sawhorses and the plan is to lift the tub off and set it on the sawhorses first. And then while I have it on the sawhorses, I can then go ahead and um, it fix everything. And essentially I'm gonna put a two by four to the back here. That's gonna connect into these bumper mounts. I've seen everybody do that with their rotisserie. So that seems like a straightforward plan. Then I'm gonna take this one four by four here and it's gonna get bolted to the bottom of these brackets right here. And it's gonna sit on that. And then the idea is that I'm gonna have these uh, nipples with the pipe. Essentially it's gonna go through the two by four on the back, like so, but you know, through. And then also one for the four by four in the front. Sure, it probably doesn't make sense a lot right now, but it makes sense in my head. So fingers crossed by the time I'm done with this video, it makes sense to everybody. 
So let's get cracking. Let's go ahead and get some four by fours cut and measured and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna show you this before I close it back up, but essentially I got the six footers, right? So this is the six footer. I took the eight footer, I cut it in half and I did a notch on each board. And what's gonna happen now is that these are gonna close up together. And of course I'll have to hammer this in, but uh, here, give me a second, let me get the hammer. Here we go, drove it home. So this is gonna be one upright. So now I need to rinse, wash, repeat. Do it again over here. Let me get that done. All right, so I've got both of my uprights done now. And what I did is I took the other two by four and I went ahead and I cut them into two foot lengths. And so what I'm gonna do now is just screw on these as side braces to go ahead and help support it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these done now. All right, well, I've got two of the uprights made. Got those uh, cross supports in there. I'll probably end up throwing some more screws in there just for good measure. But I mean, I got a three inch screw at the top and the bottom. Um, then of course, down here, I'm gonna have massive lag bolts that go through. So you're probably wondering at this point what it is that I'll be doing next. So. I got the nipple here and it's got that flange on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is these are gonna protrude through here and they'll probably come out I don't know, a good couple of inches that way. And that's gonna be what supports the car itself. I'm gonna aim to have these up at about three foot. Three foot will give me the height that I need to be able to fully spin the car. And I should be okay to do that. Um, I'm just thinking the only problem that I'm worried about is just clearance of these inner cross supports. But um, that's not a huge issue because I can move them and not a big deal. So the next thing is to go ahead and measure three foot from the bottom up. And then at the three foot mark, I'm going to go ahead and drill a one inch hole, which is going to allow me to plug this guy in. And then these will rotate inside of that one inch hole. But that is going to do it for at least tonight. So stick around in just a few minutes. I'll teleport you to the next day when I'm going to go ahead and, fingers crossed, get this guy taken off and set up. I think it'll end up being Saturday morning uh, and I can get my father-in-law over here to be just a second set of hands. I mean, I could probably pull this guy off without a problem right now, but it's 10 and I'm tired. So that's just kind of an idea of what's going on. And uh, we will see you in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back. So it's Saturday morning now, and uh, Grandpa Dick is here. Say hi, Grandpa Dick. Hi. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, pick up where we left off the other night. So we went ahead and uh, drilled one and a quarter inch holes in the four by fours here, which is perfect to be able to take this uh, three quarter inch uh, nipple, it's a 10 inch nipple, and that's gonna just sit inside of there. And then we did the same thing over here and uh, again nipple will fit right in so that's going to be what gives us our rotational access so now we got this taken care of I think it's time we go ahead and uh, pull the tub off what do you think pull it off all right let's do it we'll get you all set up on the tripod and uh, let's make this happen all right so here's what we got we got the cherry picker set up Got it attached to the tub, to the cross member here that I welded in. All the bolts are out. This thing's loose. We did a final walk around check just to make sure that everything was disconnected. Grandpa Dick found a few things that still need to be removed and disconnected on this side. But uh, we're good. The only thing that we're going to have to deal with is potentially just this throttle linkage here. So when we get this guy up, we'll have to kind of go that way with it or we just roll the car forward which is probably even easier um that's it so the plan is we're just going to roll the cherry picker straight back roll the chassis forward and then we're going to set the car down on the saw horses so let me get you all set up on the tripod and let's do this so you comfortable with the plan yeah i think we'll be good yes yeah. i think we'll be good
stuck. Um, uh, sugar plums. Let's suck. Yep. It's the Ebert cable. Five minutes later. Okay, got it. Okay. Now let's try that again. Set up again. Oh, are we, are we still recording? Oh yeah. Son of a. All right, there we have it. So uh, we ran into a snafu. Uh, in my infinite wisdom, I completely forgot about the e-brake cable. So I had to get up underneath there and uh, unfortunately cut it. It was a new e-brake cable, so, uh, but cutting it was a lot easier than trying to do anything else with it. So we got it currently sitting on the sawhorses uh, to quite the rake, um, but yeah, I think it's good. And then uh, we have the frame over here so this is the first time i've had a view of the frame really like this and i am happy to say that i do not see any holes so that's good looks like we have a solid frame and it really doesn't have any crinkles or anything in it because again i was kind of worried about that from before from when the underside it didn't look bad but you never know until you can get a full picture and so looking from the top it's good so now what we got to do is we're going to try to get the back half mounted. Uh, we're going to try to get this all mounted up nicely. And then once we have that mounted, we're going to put it up onto the upright and then we'll work on the front. And so right now we have it sitting on the sawhorses, but the cherry picker is still there just in case. But I think that we're pretty, pretty safe and secure all under the supervision of uh, Richard, AKA Grandpa Dick. All right, cool, well, let's, uh, let's figure out this back half. All right, so we've been finagling and fiddling and working with this thing and uh, here's what we got. So now you guys might actually can see and understand what it was that I'm trying to accomplish. So we got this two by four. We have some half inch thick bolts that go into two by four those are secured with a nut, some washers, and then on this side, nut and washers. And then here, a nut and some washers. Um, and then same thing over on this side. And now I have the floor flange, uh, this guy, in here, and I've threaded the pipe into it. And then that pipe goes through into this support. Now, currently right now it's a bit cattywampus because we don't have the center support in. We will get that in shortly. But what we gotta do first is get the front up and uh, mounted in a similar fashion. And then we will go ahead and then put in the center support. But uh, so far, it's uh, moving along. We had some things we had to figure out. Uh, a little bit of trial and error. But right now it's sitting on that and seems to be working. So let's carry on. Yep, just keep on sweeping. That's what in-laws are for. All right, cool. So we got the front um, situated. So we did the four by four like I was talking. Went ahead and sat it up on this. Uh, looking at this, I just realized this is gonna be kind of hard for me to clean up, but it's easier than it is now or was on the frame, but yeah, cause I still want to come through and like trim up all this metal. Cause this is just really ugly. Cause I couldn't access it when it was on the frame. But uh, anyways, I digress. 
Uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is do the same thing. We're gonna take more weight up. We're gonna put the front on, and then we're gonna go ahead and get a measurement of the bottom of that guy to the bottom of this guy. And uh, yeah, go ahead and put this 10 footer in. We have to cut it to the right size, of course, but I think we're pretty much there. So grab a dick. Got it. Let's do it. All right, so we did a little bit of a change of plans. We actually um, lowered the center of rotation a little bit. I think this will still work just fine. It keeps the tub a little more level. Um, and what we're doing now is we got it supported on the saw horses, but we've measured this 10 footer and this 10 footer needs to be cut at 106 inches and it's gonna go right from center to center. And then this is gonna be a little less sketchy once we get that all buttoned up. So we're gonna get this 10 footer cut and uh, we're gonna bolt it in with some big old lag bolts. So stick around. All right, so for the first time ever in my 57 episodes of Steve's Party Car Garage, I have a cameraman now. So thank you, uh, Grandpa Dick, appreciate that. So we got this thing mounted, we have it on. Um, we have the front set up, we have the back set up, we have the 10 footer installed. We ended up cutting it down to about 160 inches. Uh, we used the lag bolts, we had to use some uh, clamps to pull it all together. But now we can do this. I haven't seen this side of the car pretty much ever because this has always been covered by the tub or the frame. So I can definitely see that I got my work cut out for me down in this section. There's a good bit of rust down here, but I think that'll get all cleaned up pretty well. Uh, got these holes down here, a couple of patches there, but I mean, come on, really? <laughs> this thing's on a rotation, uh, rotisserie. So thank you, Grandpa Dick. I appreciate that. So I uh, appreciate you guys following along on the project. I'm glad that I was able to show you guys this. Um, and we're gonna wrap up the video here. I'm exhausted. We got ribs that are way overcooked on the smoker right now and I need a drink, maybe even a beer. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you hit that like and sub subscribe button. And remember, when you're working on project cars like this, don't be the dreaded previous owner. Cheers.